So I'm going to get started. Uh, my name is Rachel. Do the thing. Yeah, that thing. That thing's super weird. Um, and the, the title of my talk today is called Using Python uh, for Sarcasm Detection in Speech. So that's pretty much what I'm going to be talking about. Um, so just a little bit of background about me. Uh, I'm a PhD student at the Graduate Center at the City University of New York. Uh, I've got a master's in computational linguistics and working on my PhD now. And the work I'm going to be talking about today is joint work with uh, Andrew Rosenberg, who's my advisor. Um, it's a little bit different from some of the other talks that I've seen. Um, I'm not a developer, but uh, I do work using Python. Um, so let's talk a little bit about it. But first, let's start with a quiz. Um, so I'm going to play you two different uh, WAV files, and I want you to tell me, is it sarcastic or is it sincere? So, here it is. Uh, let's start. Thanks for respecting my confidence. Does anyone need to hear it again? <laughs> what do you think? Sarcastic or sincere? That's a, well, that was like 95% sarcastic and one person who really thinks that's sincere. Um, here's the other one. So I am a little very nervous. Sincere, but it seems less certain. OK, so general consensus may be sincere. Uh, my next question is, how do you know? This is a real question. I'm asking you, how do you know? Cadence, inflection, tone of voice. Previous, prior experience, yeah, it probably helps. <laughs> Watching too much Daria. Um, so that's basically the, our goal here. So our goal uh, that I'm going to be talking about today is automatic sarcasm detection. So we want to build a computational model that can perform the task that you just did, uh, being able to distinguish between sarcasm and sincerity in speech. Um, so why? Why is this something that we want to do? What's the point in recognizing sarcasm? Well, to begin with, very little work has actually been done regarding modeling sarcastic speech for automatic recognition, which surprises me because I think it's a cool and interesting challenge, but it's also kind of great for me because I want to do this and not a, it, there, there's still a lot of open-ended questions here for me to work on. Um, also, spoken dialogue systems are starting to crop up with increasing frequency. You see them in products more and more. Um, and it would be helpful if spoken dialogue systems can recognize colloquial speech in the way that people actually talk. Um, I think this is especially useful as sarcasm is frequently used to express negative or critical attitudes. So if you're talking to, I don't know, Siri or Cortana or your fancy new Apple Watch and it doesn't do something that you want it to do and you're like, thanks Siri, I appreciate it. Wouldn't it be nice for Siri to say, I'm sorry? <laughs> um, Sarcasm is really commonly used to express different negative attitudes. It would be nice if we could talk to our products the same way that you talk to another person. Um, a couple of basic intuitions about sarcasm, just so we can kind of uh, go from here. We're all on the same page. Uh, conventional wisdom suggests that there is a sarcastic tone of voice. For example, I played you some things and you heard them as being sarcastic. Um, Conventional wisdom also can, suggests that humans are able to distinguish between sarcasm and sincerity, even in out-of-context examples. And again, you were all just able to do this. I played you two instances of speech. You were able to tell me what was sarcastic. You didn't know who said it. You didn't know the context in which they said it. But you still had an idea. And the way that you said you had an idea was because of tone of voice. There's some sort of sarcastic tone that you're perceiving. So a couple of questions that uh, our research aims to answer, or at least to, uh, to address, if not answer, because nothing, you never really answer questions in research. Um, so first, uh, first thing we want to bring up is, do humans have clear distinctions between sarcasm and sincerity? Is there a really clear divide here between uh, how, what we perceive as sarcastic and what we perceive as sincere? Second question is, what are some of the features of sarcastic speech that make it different from sincere speech? Are there features that, that make these two different kinds of speech acts sound different? And finally, how can we represent these features in such a way that is machine learnable? 
is there such a way that we can do this representation so that we can train a model that can do a kind of classification task? Um, one of the terms I'm going to be using a lot in this talk is prosody. So I wanted to introduce you all to this particular term. Prosody um, is what we're interested on in this particular work. And prosody is not what you say, but rather the way in which you say it. Um, so this is a term that encompasses intonation, stress, rhythm, duration, and intensity of your speech. Uh, this is the area that I work in the most. So again, I'm not interested in exactly what you're saying, but rather the way in which it's being said. Um, so the goal in this work is to determine if we can detect sarcastic speech using only acoustic and prosodic cues. So this means I'm not looking at any lexical content of the, of the speech itself. So what the words that are coming up, I'm not interested in that. If you want to look about sarcasm detection in text or in lexical content, I'm doing some other work in that. Or you can, there are tons of papers if you want to look at sarcasm detection on Twitter um, that talk about lexical content being used for sarcasm detection. But in this work, we're really only interested in acoustic and prosodic cues. So um, I'm not the first person to have started looking at this. Um, Tepperman et al. in 2006 looked at this. They tried to automatically identify sarcasm specifically in the phrase, yeah, right. Um, and he concluded that prosody on its own wasn't reliable, but there were a number of limitations with his particular approach, particularly attributed to corpus problems. Corpus problems are a lot of problems in speech. Um, he look, was looking at the Fisher uh, corpus, which recorded telephone conversations between strangers, and sarcasm is less frequently used among strangers and among people who know each other. Um, also, Cheng and Pell in 2008 sought to characterize a sarcastic tone of voice by looking at different acoustic features that could be indicative of sarcastic speech. And they found that reduced pitch and decreases in pitch variation were predictive of sarcastic speech. So we're sort of starting here and working from this as our baseline. So how do you build a sarcasm recognition system? You can do so in as many steps as I put on this slide. Um, the first thing that you want to do is acquire a database consisting of sarcastic speech. Um, if you have one, can I have it? Um, <laughs> this is the first problem that we really need to overcome. Uh, the second thing that you want to do is to look at human sarcasm perception as a baseline, so you have some idea of how good humans are at this particular task. Next, build a model. Um, we did basic feature extraction and representation of these features, which I'll talk about in more detail. And then classification. Um, see if the features that we have of sarcastic and sincere speech are in fact predictive. So let's build a corpus. Um, to build a corpus, I used, uh, I went to this great TV show. I think it's great. Uh, Daria, which was an animated television show that ran on MTV from 1997 to 2002. This is a scripted show, um, so it's acted speech, and it contains a lot of sarcastic and sincere speech. This is different from traditional acted speech corpora in that it contains speech that's sort of dictated by the character state and the context within the show. So it's not just um, a person acting out an emotion in a sound booth. Um, in a way, it's also more it's also a little bit better than speech spoken um, isolated in a sound booth because it sounds a little bit more natural, although it is still an acted speech corpus. So it's been scripted and someone's practiced saying these lines. Um, yeah. A couple details about the corpus. Um, it was built in June of 2012. It consists of 150 sentences of speech from Daria, the titular character. These are all in wave format. The audio was extracted from DVDs of the show, then normalized using Adobe Audition. We aim to have approximately 75 sarcastic and 75 sincere sentences in the corpus. But um, to make sure that we had this, we ran a survey to get human judgments on the data. Um, oddly enough, so the, the survey itself we at, was a binary forced choice task. We asked people, OK, listen to this sentence, do you think it is sarcastic or sincere? There was no middle 
ground, you had to pick one or the other, yet we still received a trimodal distribution of responses, which is crazy. Um, so a lot of people really agreed that things were sarcastic, and a lot of people really agreed that things were sincere, and then there was a handful of utterances where we had like 50% disagreement. Um, people just did not agree on whether the sentences were sarcastic or sincere. Um, we also saw more consistent agreement that, uh, on sarcasm than on sincerity, which may have been due to priming or an uneven distribution of sentences. So to sort of handle that, we removed any ambiguous data from the corpus, uh, which left us with 112 sentences that were labeled as clearly sarcastic or clearly sincere. Yes? We could have, but um, due to time constraints, we didn't. But we probably could if I wanted to go through and try to refill that in again. Um, so to extract an acoustic baseline, to have kind of the, the features that we knew would be predictive, uh, I used the Snack Sound Toolkit, which is a library for Python that does basic sound handling and analysis. Um, it's from Sweden. Uh, this is a nice toolkit, but it's a bit outdated. Um, if anyone wants to update it or has other suggestions of things I could use, that would be nice. Mm -hmm. I, I use Prot as well, um, but this is a Python-oriented talk, so this is the stuff I did in Python. Um, so I use this for a lot of the, the sound extraction. Um, I used uh, sentence-level acoustic features as a baseline for the sarcasm detection system. Um, so that means basically sentences, um, or rather taking uh, acoustic features from the whole sentence overall. So a little bit about the acoustic baseline. Um, we extracted a pitch and intensity measurement every uh, 0.015 milliseconds. Um, the acoustic baseline that we extracted from the sentences were mean pitch, so average pitch, which we measured as log mean F0. Uh, also range pitch to measure the amount of pitch variation within the sentences themselves. We also looked at the standard deviation of pitch. Uh, we also chose to look at mean intensity. We looked at this in decibels, also, as well as intensity range, which was a measure of intensity variation in the sentences. And also we looked at speaking rate. Um, we looked at speaking rate using syllables per log second and in order to get syllables, we use Carnegie Mellon's pronunciation dictionary uh, to determine the syllables. Um, and this, again, these features sort of came out of prior research that has been done on uh, sarcastic speech. But we also wanted to look at a bunch of different prosodic features. So we aspired to look at intensity and pitch contours also at the word level. The idea here is that sarcastic speech is likely to be identifiable at the word level and not necessarily at a sentence level. So you can identify single words that sound sarcastic. Uh, we also wanted to try modeling prosodic context using n-gram modeling. And this springs from a hypothesis that sarcastic tone is not completely independent from con the context of the tone of the words around it. So if you have one sarcastic word, it's likely that your sarcastic tone, in my opinion at least, is going to show up on the words near your primary uh, word that's taking your sarcastic tone. So we wanted to kind of model that context as well. And so we, we also aimed to look at uh, prosodic contour sequences. So this is looking at the sequences of the pitch and intonation curves um, to see if we can find any sequences that are representative of sarcastic speech. Uh, and so to do this, we clustered the pitch and intensity of each word and trained a sequence model over these cluster identities. So in a little bit more detail, um, to represent our prosodic contours, we used uh, three coefficient Legendre polynomial expansions to model the pitch and intensity contour of each word. So if you're wondering where we found this, we got this from numpy.polynomial.legendre. Thanks, numpy, for having all of these things. Um, so this left us with uh, pitch curves and intensity curves of each word in each sentence, which is very high dimensional and a very high variance result. So we wanted to compare our contours and to be able to see where things were compatible. So to do this, we needed to reduce both the dimensionality and the variance of these contours. To do that, we used SIPE's k-means clustering algorithm to determine approximate contours. Uh, we did some tweaking and found that K3 plus K, K equals 3 clusters worked the best. 
So we clustered all the contours into three distinct types of categories. Um, we then used the resulting centroids of each cluster as contour estimates. This left us with, obviously, three different contour approximations. Um, and that's all great, I can say that, but it's easier to kind of show you what they look like. So as you can see, we have uh, a number of different pitch, we have these three different pitch curves that we were able to, um, to cluster. And they, they kind of look like this. We have so you know, some more sharply rising curves, slightly more sharply rising curve, and then a, a rather dramatically falling curve. We also had three pretty distinct intensity curves, so shallow falling, intensely rising, and then sort of more shallowly rising intensity. We then looked to do uh, our sequence modeling. So to do our sequence modeling, we created sequences of contours by assigning each word to a cluster identity that it was closest to. We use this um, using SIPE's Euclidean distance algorithm. Um, so as an example, again, I could say these things, but examples are, I think, a little bit more useful. Um, we have this sentence here. I can just make out the words incipient migraine. Which has these uh, patterns. So the pitch pattern here is this, the pitch doesn't really vary a lot in this particular uh, instance. It's all mapped to pitch curve B, and, but the intensity contours kind of shift between A and B. Oh. Uh, then we did some n-gram modeling. So we explored uh, both unigram and bigram modeling for this. And n-gram modeling, if you're not familiar with it, um, is basically the idea that any continuous sequence of n items in any, is basically based on uh, modeling continuous sequences of n items in any given sequence. So you can do this for text, or you can do this for speech. Um, for our unigram sequences, we calculated the percentage of each curve in the sentence as a whole. And for our bigram modeling, we calculated the perplexity under both sarcastic and sincere models. So this is the idea that if we know what word we have and we know the word that comes before it, what, and we know the contours of each word, do, will, that, uh, will this help us predict what the next contour of the word following it's going to be? Um, so in addition to the acoustic features that I mentioned before, we then use these prosodic features as part of our model. So we used uh, pitch unigrams A, B, and C, intensity to unigrams A, B, and C, the pitch bigram perplexity under both sarcasm and sincere models, and the intens intensity bigram perplexity under both models as well. Um, then we did some classification. So we split the corpus randomly into a train and test set with two thirds of the data used as training. We trained the bigram model on the full train set. Um, for machine learning, we used Weka's simple logistic classifier for classification. Question, why not scikit-learn? Great question. I didn't know about it when I was doing this to begin with, so that's sheer ignorance on my part. Um, but it would be great to retry this again using scikit-learn. Um, there's no reason why we couldn't do it there. It would probably have taken less time, and I would have had to write at attribute way fewer times. I don't know if anyone knows Weka. It's terrible. It's great, but it's also just finicky and sad. Um, so uh, also our majority baseline for this task was 55.26% uh, because um, we had more sarcastic utterances than sincere utterances in the corpus. So how did we do? Well, actually pretty well. Um, we were most successful using uh, all of our acoustic baseline, all of the unigrams and intensity bigrams. This gave us an accuracy around 81%, which is pretty accurate. Um, that was really exciting. It continues to be really exciting to me. Um, some of the predictive features that we found, our most predictive feature from the acoustic baseline was pitch range. We again found that reduced pitch range is predictive of sarcastic speech. We also found that prosodic modeling of contours does improve sarcasm recognition. We found that sarcastic speech has fewer instances of falling pitch and more instances of shallow pitch rise than sincere speech has. And we also found that sarcastic speech has more instances of shallowly rising intensity than sincere speech. 
So basically, overview of our results, um, we achieved 81.57% accuracy on the test set, which is a 46.14 relative reduction in error over our baseline. The predictive features that we found of sarcastic speech include reduced pitch range, fewer instances of falling pitch and shallow pitch rise, more instances of shallowly rising intensity. Um, there are a number of ways in which we could extend this system in the future. Um, to begin with, uh, at the moment, it's a speaker-dependent system, so it would be great to add additional speakers to our system. This means that we need more instances of sarcasm to train on. So again, if anyone has corpora of people being sarcastic in their speech, I would like that very much. Um, it would also be interesting to see if we can really handle sincerity as opposed to not sarcasm. I think at the moment, the way that the model is predicting, it's really more of a binary between yes, sarcastic and not sarcastic. Um, since we didn't really include any features to distinguish sincere speech. So that would be something that we want to work towards in the future. Uh, we'd also like to test naturally occurring sarcasm. At the moment, our corpus contains only acted speech. Again, it's pretty contextual, so it it's, should be quite similar, but it would be nice to have naturally occurring sarcasm as well. Uh, I'd also like to look at syllable level features. So we have sentence level and word level. Might as well go down to the syllable level, see if we can find more things there. It would also be great to see how the system works across languages. So if you have instances of sarcasm in speech in a language that is not English, again, I would love some of this data. Um, and we're also working now on sarcasm synthesis, which I gave a very confused lightning talk about yesterday. Um, and this is the idea here is to use what we've learned about sarcastic prosody to create realistic sounding um, synthesized sarcasm. So to kind of see if we can take what we've learned about sarcasm and go the other way with it. Um, we've got uh, a test up right now if you are interested in kind of beta testing some of our um, synthesized sarcasm. Uh, you can go to speech.cs.qc.qd.edu. You can go there. You can change the last number from anywhere between 1 and 30, depending on how many sets of 10 things you feel like listening to. If you like listening to computers being sarcastic. May Sorry, computers may be being sarcastic to you. I can't say they're being sarcastic since we're not sure if it worked yet. Um, so you can try that out. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much my talk. If you want to find me. Pardon? Sure. I'll linger here. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll linger here for a minute if anyone wants to, to type this in. Um, but I'm, I'm quite internet searchable. So you can find me on the internet or in real life if you have other questions about sarcasm. I'm happy to talk about it with you. Uh, yeah. Thanks.